I'm going to start with an audacious question. Given the time and space in which we live, my question is pretty bold. It's pretty audacious. Are you bringing your best self to work? Now, I know I'm asking this question in an age of increasing burnout. Contribution calibration, which come some are calling quiet quitting, overall disconnection and disengagement. We shouldn't be surprised that fewer than two out of five workers, according to Gallup, do what they do best every day. That statistic has been standard for at least 20 years. Now, men, older workers, and white workers are less likely to report burnout than their counterparts for marginalized groups, but 42% of over 10,000 full-time desk-based workers in six countries, including the U.S. and U.K., report increased mental distance from their jobs, energy depletion, and negativism. In short, the opposite of best self-activation at work. So, I'm here to explore today how so many of us drifted so far out of alignment with our best selves. Let's think about automobiles. You know, when we don't attend to those small bumps in the road, a slight drift in focus, a weakened suspension system, or for us humans, a support system, or just the ordinary wear and tear of taking on more than we can handle without proper maintenance, we can begin to underperform due to misalignment. But that's not the only reason. Over time, this inattention to alignment makes it even harder to steer around potholes in our path. We're more likely to run off the road and onto the curb or even to crash into others who cross our path, leaving major damage in our wake. So how do we tap into our best selves? How do we rekindle the flame of our deepest desires to connect and contribute from a position of strength how do we move beyond surviving to thriving and flourishing and to do so at work of all places? Today, I'll highlight three steps of what I call the alignment quest. They're data-driven, evidence-informed. I'm going to translate them into action implications, though, that help us to bring our mindset and our behavior in sync with our best selves. I call them the three arms of the R's of the alignment quest redefine, realign, and redesign. The first R, redefine. Do you even recognize your best self? I've been doing this research for over 20 years and every time I ask the question, most of the people in the room actually struggle to define, to describe, to tap into their best selves. Think about your best self as your source of vitality and value creation. When you redefine yourself in terms of your best self, you start to clarify and appreciate the worth of your strengths and your contributions. We call this positive identity work. It's the constant effort that we put forth to build a more positive sense of self and to be viewed favorably by others. Humans have an insatiable desire to cultivate and sustain positive identities but we also have a big problem. Whether our job is considered higher status or lower status, most of us don't know how good we are. We exist within what I call a praise deficit. We give and we get little to no high quality, actionable feedback about our strengths and contributions. We underestimate the positive impact of genuine compliments. And we underestimate the impact of sincere expressions of gratitude. As a result, we also underestimate the extent to which other people like us. In its place, we exchange superficial, vague flattery. We rely upon self-enhancing biases. We lack the data that we need to learn the most about our best selves. Sure. We might buy into the belief that we're better than average on various skills and attributes that don't actually correspond with our strengths, but those start to drive us down paths that are out of alignment with our best selves. So this first step of the alignment quest redefining is about changing our mentality about our strengths and changing our mentality about some constraints and limitations so that we can better understand, embrace, and identify with the truth of the matter, which is that we are in fact stronger than we think. 
So my colleagues from the University of, um, of Michigan Center for Positive Organizations, including Jane Dutton, who was just referenced, Bob Quinn, Gretchen Spritzer, Brianna Kaza, Emily Heafy. Over the past 20 years, we've developed and tested an empirically validated tool for discovering our own reflected best selves. And to most people's surprise, our best self often shows up in the most ordinary of circumstances. This is the good news. It shows up not just at the mountain climbing monumental moments, but it shows up in our everyday actions, mobilizing others to accomplish tasks, just sticking it out, persisting through the challenges and building bridges that connect and include people. All of these actions can tap into our strengths, reflect our core values, increase our own vitality, and help us to strengthen others. So when we put our core strengths and talent into practice in this way, it generates vitality. That means it creates a positive life-enhancing experience for us, and it also fuels value creation. We're delivering results. We're making a contribution to the world that's important and valuable, not just to us, but also to others around us. So then the second phase of the alignment quest is realign. How do we use this greater self-knowledge of our positive identities at work to better navigate pressures of self-doubt, competing commitments, feelings of exclusion? As we learn more about our best selves and we share this knowledge with others, we build more authentic connections to our sources of strength, as Francesca Gino has documented in her research projects, and you'll hear from her later today. We also connect more deeply with our work-related tasks, with our work organizations, and with our social network of work and non-work counterparts. So to realign your time and talents in ways that activate your best self, you do need to calibrate your capability, your commitment, and your capacity so that you maximize your contributions. What are my capabilities? How do my strengths enable me to consistently deliver desired results? Second, how can I align my work commitments with my core values? What's my why for showing up and contributing? And then third, how do I create the necessary bandwidth and leverage the resources that I need so that I can increase my capacity and dedicate the necessary time and effort to reflect my best self. When we continually assess what we're bringing to our work, we can align more strongly with our best selves. But the third phase of the alignment quest also asks the important question, is my work bringing out the best in me? The redesign phase means at times we might have to redesign our organizations in ways that honor, evoke, and inspire people to grow their best selves. Their stereotyping, intergroup bias, prejudice, oppression, they all highlight negative attributes, especially those of marginalized group members, and they de-emphasize strengths and contributions. So when we find ourselves in the context of disaffirming and devaluing situations, we may need to redesign that organization as leaders. We may also need to redesign our career path and our life so that our work can bring out the best in us. Diversity, inclusion, equity, and justice are at the forefront of creating workplaces where we are truly free to become our best selves, irrespective of power, status, respect, or our social identities. We bet on people's potential. We look at those who are often underestimated and under-resourced, and we take them on as our champions and our partners, serving as mentors, sponsors, and coaches, and providing the substantive feedback and the safe cover needed to survive and thrive at work. So be prepared for an alignment quest that may require you to redesign your organization and possibly redesign your life. The alignment quest never ends. It's an ongoing effort to rediscover what makes us special, to combat our insecurities by anchoring in our strengths and to architect our environment in ways that bring out the best in ourselves and others. We may have to rethink our career, but being entrepreneurial is where we take the courageous responsibility to ourselves, aligning with our best selves and giving our greatest gifts to the world. 
I'll close with two quotes. First, from songstress Lizzo, in case nobody told you today, you are special. And the second quote from abolitionist Edward Everett Hale, I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something that I can do. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I hope you can hear the applause in the room. Um, so we have one question. It's interesting. I'm thinking about a lot of the deans that I know and a lot of any CEOs, this question of culture post-COVID along the lines that you've been, you know, the issue of the alignment quest. So here's the, here's the question. How can organizations create a culture that supports and encourages individuals to pursue their own alignment quest? And what benefits can this approach have for both individuals and the organization as a whole? Tough question. A culture is so important, it really is the foundation. The first element that we need in our culture to truly tap into and activate best selves is uh, strength spotting and amplifying people's contributions. You know, help us to get more high quality data on our strengths and then build teams that help to complement and align people around their strengths and the requirements of their roles. The second is, I think, is a little bit deeper and probably harder. It's the recognition that uh, we need a culture that embraces positive deviance because everyone doesn't look the same, act the same, or work the same when we activate our best selves. So changing a culture um, means coming up against some of the norms and expectations of conformity, instead welcoming and leveraging strengths as valued differences and thinking about our differences as the strength of our collective. But with an underlying focus on learning from and across differences, building on psychological safety, which Amy Edmondson talked about today, and upholding justice, I believe that we can all grow closer to our best selves one day at a time. <laughs>